Who's doing an outstanding April 25th, 2024. One second here. Talk about the markets S&P. Talk about some of the names I've traded today. Some updates on some other names. And then earnings after the close. A couple names. And then we also have the big inflation data. PCE data. Tomorrow, the preferred gauge of the Federal Reserve. How they prefer to look at inflation. They use a PCE. But we'll say first start with the markets. And we were already gapping lower overnight after the, the Facebook earnings. IBM. Facebook. Post a nice beat, but then they talked about higher expenses and a little of their guidance was, I guess, cautious. They're going to spend more money. The stock, and we've already had these moves. I said it this morning, too, when I did my little rant, how every time Facebook or Meta now uh, sells off, everybody talks about how much how much money uh, Zuckerberg lost, right? So I think the big loss a couple of quarters ago dropped 25%. Today, it's only down about 11% now, off the lows. I was looking at the puts over no, last night in the after hours session when we start to dip near 400 and the 400 strikes were like 60 cents. I said, wow, if it hits 400 bucks at the open tomorrow, they're going to be 20, 25 bucks. And then sure enough, the reverse is go to 420, 430 and those puts only open up uh, 100%. So anyway, so let me talk about the markets here. Uh, you know, so the SPY, the, we had the GDP numbers come out this morning and missed estimates and then the jobless claims came out and they were lower than expected, so kind of a mixed bag, but the future sold off. And you would think the lower GDP data will give the Fed the fuel to, or at least the argument to, to cut rates, as opposed to if it was a really strong GDP number. It's almost like, and I've been saying this since the fall, the Fed is trying to inc incite a recession or like in, to instigate a recession, or at least to slow down growth. And by curbing the growth, then that will keep inflation lower or, or bring in inflation. And the hope is that they won't have to do that and inflation will come down. So we'll find out tomorrow. But the SPY all the way under 500, then 498. And then found some support there around 497.50 and bounced. Um, I was looking at the VIX. And even this morning before the market opened, the VIX was somewhat muted. The, the move, uh, you know, if you, if you look at the VIX, well, it was up, I think, 7%, then 8% at the open. Then it got all the way up to nearly 10%, hitting 1755. And then since 10, 10 o'clock, it's melted ever since. Uh, almost went flat just before. Now it's up 2% here at 1638. The VIX has been a pretty good indicator, or at least it has preceded some of the moves up and down. So back when we had the sell off two weeks ago, the VIX on that Friday when we had the big melt off, it started, it was up like 20% even before the market started to, to really start to sell off. Today was a different story. We, before the market really started to buy the dip, we were still under 500 when the VIX started to bounce. Let's see where we were at. at uh, at 10 o'clock, yeah, that's where we were at 497. So it started to, right, right when that, that hit, we, it just started to melt off really quick. So definitely be watching that, especially so today after the close, we have Google, Microsoft, Intel, Snap, Roku, a, a bunch of other names reporting. Probably want to see some inline numbers, a little better guidance. Uh, and then hopefully the PC data comes in inline or cool than expected tomorrow. Maybe that's a, that'd be a cocktail or a recipe for the S&P to at least hold his gains into the weekend. I, I keep saying that 504.50 area on the SPY, that's kind of my line in the sand on support resistance. So I think it would bode well if we can get back above that uh, into the weekend. And then we have a, a, you know another another earning week ahead. Let's see what this is here. And then the Fed, I think the Fed's next Wednesday too. Um, I think they're on May 2nd. So the S&P's up 1.36% so far this week. So not bad. And let me just see what the Fed meeting is, right? I think it's next Wednesday, right? Um... Is it, is it May? Yeah, May 1st, right? So next Wednesday is May 1st. So that's the next Fed meeting. They're not going to say, they're not going to cut rates. They're not going to raise rates. It's all about the commentary. What's Fed Chair Powell going to say? So definitely a big week next week. All right, so that's the markets. Uh, last but not least, that 50-day moving average. So we started today, 45% of the companies were over their 50-day moving average on the S&P. Now it's 43%. So, uh, you know, well, 43%. So 200 and whatever companies because of 500 by... <laughs> Split in half. So uh, definitely still hanging there. Don't want to see that trend in the uh, in the wrong direction later today or tomorrow. So let me talk about some of the trades. So one of the names, and I've traded, I, I've talked about quite some time, Broadcom for, for downside as a greed reset. If the markets really start to find pressure, I thought some of these names would really find uh, downside because they've rallied so far so so quickly. Um, you know, you take a look at Broadcom in December, was, it was in 800s. 
and then it's all the way up to 1450 at the start of March. Not saying it doesn't deserve to be valued at, at a premium valuation based on the business and its growth and everything that's going on, especially in AI and, and all that fun stuff. But I do think at some points you see some of these names, they sell off not because of any fundamental reason, but because just the, the market profit takers come in and it's a kind of a snowball effect. And then finally the buyers step in. So we saw that when I had the puts last week, uh, start to bounce. Uh, this week was up three days in a row. And then even though the market was down today at the open, you saw Vago starting to bounce and it was on strong volume. If you look at the candles, I don't have the daily uh, one minute volume candles here. I mean, I could probably pull it up. But if you look at the the Avago one minute candles on the, uh, at the open, there was it was huge. Let's see if I can pull it up here. So typically, I, it's not a name I trade on the call side, but I said, wow, this thing looks like it's going to explode. I can put, put in the chat room for those listening, and let's see if I can uh, slide this in. I don't think I'm going to be able to slide this in, but uh, anyway. So I got some of those calls when it was trading. I think it was 1278 or 12, 1288, somewhere in there. Uh, I got the 1310s, and then you know it spiked up to 1294, then back down. You look at the candles, it's still an uptrend. And then once it hit over 1300, I locked some in for over 100%. And then it hit 1308 and the volume kind of fizzled. So uh, it started to get back down to 1300. So I, you know, I locked the rest of them in and I figure I'll revisit at some point. But now the stock went all the way back down to 1280. It's been chopping around between 1280 and 1305. So definitely need to watch tomorrow, especially if there's decent earnings from Microsoft and Google, uh, from Intel. Just maybe it's a name it trades up near 1350 or so. So I'll be watching that one. Uh, second is the names I've been watching for earnings the last uh, this week. Pool, URI, GWW. Let's see if I have those up on the charts. Ba -ba. Oh, I think I just switched them here. So that was a Vago. Oh, so so URI, right? So I, I looked at the earnings. They're great. They not only a strong beat, but a nice raise for United Rentals. I It was gapping in the pre-market. It was up near 680. I thought it was going to take off. Mark was selling off. I was watching that. I was watching the Vogue, uh, Broadcom. I was watching Pool. And then all three of those, GWW, Pool, and URI, sold off right at the open. URI went from 680 down to 643 at uh, right at the 10 o'clock lows. So I kind of took it off the short-term watch list. And then I start to I put it back on later, and it's at 670. I said, wow, this might reverse red and start to trade in the green. And once it started to do that and went and got those 710 strikes, uh, already locked some in to cover costs, a little bit of profit. I'll hold the rest. I don't know if I'm going to hold them all into tomorrow. I only have a couple left, but I might lock just a, a few more and then just ride the rest into tomorrow. Because when you see these reversals on earnings, especially a move like you have on URI, they say that one of their acquisitions was included in the in the guidance, and I think that threw people off and they sold it off based on their reasons. So that so maybe that's why you see that that slingshot move, the reversal, because people look and say, wait a second, they have it wrong. I think this trades over 700 tomorrow, especially if the market cooperates, probably even higher, so over 710. So minimal risk now. I'm riding free. I, I might I might hold most the rest or all for that possible outcome, but don't be surprised if you see me lock some in. So decent uh, trades, at least on the call side, considering the market. But somebody I put it on the watch list this morning as well. Some for some reason I love the red, red to green opens or red to bounce opens because it seems like you can find some some dips and then and get some opportunities to play call. So that was uh, Vago, that, uh, Frogcom, that's URI. Uh, you know, I was looking to pool. Pool did the same thing all the way down to 358 this morning, went up to three, I think it hit three, 380 at noon, at the noon hour. So so a $22 reversal. And now it's sitting here at 370. I'll probably pass on that one for now, but definitely watching that. And similar thing happened to GWW. Look at GWW all the way down from the 960 open down to 920. And here it is at 950, still slightly in the red. That might be a name I'll I, I will look at, but their earnings weren't as good. So if I do, it would probably be probably be pool. All right, so let me get on into into Riley. I've been talking about Riley, especially since its 10K was filed yesterday. Added some spec calls yesterday, and some of it was uh, I also had some Trupanion calls. Uh, just because I think the short's going to start unwinding their position and it's going to cause like a distortion in the markets, and we saw that. And these are small cap names, they're not big cap names. So when you have, you know, I think it's 15, 16 million shares in the float on Riley, 11 million of those are short. So you start doing the math, 11 million times, you know, 33, it was four, $350 million worth of stock or sold short somewhere. I'm trying to do the math, maybe I'm not accurate here, but that's a lot of money uh, in a small cap name when the valuation of the stock is only, well, now it's higher, but it was at 900 million before. Uh, so now you take a look at some of these other names they might be short in and, little distortions in small cap names, it doesn't take much to distort them. 
So I'm, I try to think of examples. And, you know, one was COVID. Uh, I forget the big fund that went under. And I was in, I was long iRobot. I was long some of these, and, and you saw some of these other names go. I think the person was short GameStop and they started liquidating billions of dollars of stock uh, and billions of dollars of shorts. And you saw iRobot go from 110 to, to 200 the same day. I, I'm not saying the same thing is going to happen, but you start looking, the longer this goes, you have to think they start unwinding some of the positions. So the people who are in Riley start doing, look at Reddit has some great information and, and some on Fintwit, their long ENVX is the ticker. Um, I don't even know what they do, but that stock is down 3%. Looks like it was down a heck of a lot more. They're long uh, overstock. So I, I've been in and out of overstock. I kind of like that as a short short squeeze, but that one's down nearly 5% today. And I'm trying to think of the others. But needless to say, I mean, is that the sign that they're starting to, to take profits or having to reallocate to either offset a margin call so that they don't have to cover their shorts in Riley? Or are the, or they're starting or they're raising capital to short it Riley more. I don't know. I'm I was hoping the reverse for True Trupanion. They would start covering their shirts shorts in Trupanion. But anyway, here it is at 33 bucks. Before just a little while ago, one of these uh folks who've been short Riley and writing these bear pieces, I forget the person's name. I'm not sure they're called bear, bear claw, bear something. I don't know. They just came out with a thread on the 10K for for Riley that came out yesterday. And pretty much the bear case on Riley was that it was it's a fraud, right? It's going to zero. The, the directors, they're all corrupt. <laughs> they're hiding loans. They're in cahoots with this guy who just did, uh, who's a partner, was a convicted of a Ponzi scheme and all this fun stuff. So that was the bear case. But now this, the, the first person who's been bearish, the company, now just comes out and writes a, writes a thread going over the 10K. And pretty much in, in summation, it says uh, they're going to have a cash issue. So, so it's like, wait a second, is it a fraud or is it a, is it a cash issue? Because there's lots of companies that have cash issues, and but they're not frauds, right? So I, I just found it kind of funny. It's like uh, the story is changing because I, I feel like they're caught with their pants down. So anyway, I don't like to see anybody hurt or lose, whatever. So I'm just trying to take advantage of a trade. I was looking, they added more strikes for next week. The, the premiums have come down a little bit. I'm not sure if I'll add any more just because it takes a lot of energy to, to watch some names, especially a volatile name like Riley. So I'm hoping it gets over, you know, 36, 37 tomorrow. I'll lock the rest of my 35s in and kind of put that put that one away and not revisit. But it's one of those names. If it does catch fire, I mean, I could see it going 40, 45, 50. But again, it's not a great, it's not a growth story. A GameStop was a great short story because they had tons of cash, no debt, a huge scale. You, you can make a bull case on on GameStop, right? It's not it's not going bankrupt. There's no fraud. The the issue with Riley is they have 2.8 billion dollars in debt. A lot of their stuff is tied up in assets. They have to make uh, preferred dividend payments. They have to make they have, they would have baby bonds. They have all this, all these financial instruments that have to get paid. So they're bleeding cash every quarter just to keep those things afloat. Uh, and they were paying a dividend. They were paying, uh, doing a buyback. So they had. There's a lot of those things that you look at. And say, wow. I mean, it's not. It's not a great story. I mean, they have some things that need to get cleaned up. Maybe sell some of the assets. And now that they didn't do a filing. Uh, they were late on their filings. Very hard for them to do an offering. Um, I don't know if there's a restriction, but I don't think you can do an offering right off the bat. So anyway, so that's my little rant on Riley. I just hope that there's collateral damage that causes them to cover Trupanion and then the Trupanion starts to soar. Um, speaking of which on Trupanion, do I have it on here? I think I do. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you saw it this morning. It almost looked like it was being manipulated. Trupanion was, it closed at 23... 94 yesterday and then this morning someone comes down and the spread was 20 90 by 24 20 in the pre-market pretty much all pre-market and then someone just comes down with a with a block ask at 23. so it's like why if you're someone who's here to make money would you just plop your ass down at 23 in the pre-market in an illiquid market that makes absolutely no sense to me and then within a little while the ask was cleared out and then it was 20 20 290 by 2340 but to me it's like that that just reeks of someone trying to make it look like the stock is going to open lower and induce selling that's just me maybe i'm wrong okay you know i'm not naive enough i'm not i'm not not uh how would you say it uh arrogant enough to think i know everything because i certainly don't so maybe i'm totally off track on that but anyway this is another reason why i think it's going to squeeze at some point we have you know earnings so so if the Fed meetings on May 1st, which would be Wednesday. I guess true Panion earnings would be on Thursday. 
They've had some snafus. They had to delay their filing, similar to what Riley did because of some internal controls. I think that's been taken care of. So, you know, I think if it's not, hasn't been artificially sold off down here, I think it's a $35, $40 stock. So I'll continue to look for opportunities to play that one for upside. I may look to scale out of my calls, my lower strikes, and just add some speculative higher strikes, take some of the risk out, and then those will be big baggers if it really does start to move. Um, Dell, finally back over that uh, that trend line. Hopefully this holds. I'm trading right near 125 here right now. I'm going to wait to add some June strikes, but um, finally showing some signs. But every time I say finally, then the next day it's sold off. So hopefully today it can hold its gains. And Intel, maybe the, the earnings after the close today will help uh, buoy some of these stocks. And Dell can close over 130 into the end of the week. Uh, I already talked about URI. Uh, VKTX, uh, you know, some nothing new of note on the conference call. Again, I said it this morning. I think there was a comment from on the conference call where they're looking to do another study with a high, higher dosage of the oral oral um, solution, which if you look at their data for oral, you can see like the placebo and then the smaller dose and then the higher dose. And then the highest dose had the 13% plus weight loss in whatever it was, uh, three month time, or 12 weeks, or, yeah, 12 weeks. Uh, so you start you know extrapolating that data and start doing the math on what it looks like on a couple months or you know a couple more months or a year i mean you can you can see it's going to be superior to mvo and lois for kobe and wetbound but uh nothing else of note which i guess good and bad <laughs> i mean the bad is it's not the stock's not really moving too much so it kills some of the premiums uh the good is i mean the stock's not down today right so it's kind of hanging in there it's up three percent i hope it's just a start of a, of a move i would would have liked to see it over 70 got up to 69 and change uh, in the morning and finally a decent candle you can actually see the candle on the daily chart on on vktx something you haven't been able to see on the daily for quite some time let's see if i can i think i have it in the chat room no i don't have it in the chat room let's see if i just zoom this in yeah, you can finally see the candle on vktx so i think that's a good sign so finally hopefully some uh you know some continuation tomorrow and uh oh, it looks like the vix is back and spies back over 55 or 330. All right, good signs there. Um, trying to think of some other names. I, I think that's about it. I, you know, Roku, I've done many rants on Roku, back, especially it was one of my favorite stocks for quite some time. It's pretty much since its IPO. You know, back in the day, I used to think, and I've said this probably hundreds or even thousands of times over the years, but Roku to me always used to be a stick. And then once you finally start to realize Roku is a platform, um, and then they start stepping away from the hardware to the software and then to be just the, and I used to call it the, um, uh, one platform to stream them all, right? Because they're a non, uh, non-biased content, a platform provider for content, right? They're, they don't have any kind of affiliation with, with Netflix or Amazon or Google, or YouTube, uh, HBO, Peacock, the old Paramount plus all those different services. There's no affiliation with them. So they, they don't have to have. You know, Apple Plus, they don't have to have these deals where they, they were some workarounds. You know, Apple and Google might not might, might not want their service on their platform or, or vice versa, where Roku is just platform neutral, right? Con they don't care who's who it is or what, what have you. So I always thought that was one of the big pieces of their moat and obviously their subscriber base. And um, they've done a really good job of getting, now that they have a, a huge base, now monetizing that. And they've seen increases in their average revenue per user and uh, ads and they they have their Roku channel and then they finally, you know, I think they're working on the, the ad side of what happens when you pause them, hit the pause and, and all those those great things. But then I guess it got to a point, you know, I still I still look I still think it's they the company should I still am bullish the company, but it seems as of late you had the deal Walmart um with with uh, Vizio, right? Uh, and then there's other deals out there and then you start worrying uh you know what is there really a mode around their business i don't know so this is probably the quarter it's going to go from 60 bucks to 85 bucks just like it did a couple couple years ago and i'm going to miss out uh but i i just don't want to be in situations happen so many times where i'm on the wrong side of roku trade because into earnings the other thing is i've, I've been watching and you look at spotify yesterday and spotify was like concerning because it, stellar quarter the stock goes bonkers the the, the previous day after earnings and uh, and you think, okay, this is on a crash course with, you know, it's going to go to 330, then 340, then 350. And then if you look at the chart, did nothing but 
but melts lower yesterday. And there wasn't really much in a way of negative catalyst. And not only that, it did it in, in lockstep with Netflix. So to me, it's like, is that sector kind of put on hold for now? I'm not saying it's done, but like, is that similar things going to happen to Roku, even on a beat and raise? Maybe they, the people are still just going to sell that space. Like the, the cutting the cord boom is done. And I wouldn't say the boom, but for the markets, it's all priced in. I don't know. So that's kind of in the back of my head. And I'm probably overthinking this, but it's going to keep me out of Roku today. So if you're in the calls, that probably means it's going to the moon. But uh, that's the Roku. I'm trying to think of some of the other names. I've, I was looking at a line yesterday. I'd, I'd posted the, the medium move. I think it was like 12%. Uh, great, nice quarter. Uh, then the stock all the way up to 345 or so in the after hours. And then today, just reverse course. Went from 327 at the open down to 297. Starting to bounce. Uh, a line's a great trade after earnings if it sells off because they have a, 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 a huge stock buyback program. And right now it's in a blackout period. And they usually typically announce some kind of accelerated program after earnings, especially if there's weakness or the stock doesn't move much. So that's a name to watch uh, in the coming days after earnings, next three, four days, or maybe even next week to, to trade for upside. So that's that was a name for, for yesterday. And then after the close, there was another name that was on my radar. Um, oh, Dexacom, Gilead, Team. You know, Team... Team is, uh, it's been volatile for earnings. And I, you know, I don't know that's, I used to know that story back in the day, but that was all the way up in the, it went from in December is 175 or so, went all the way up to 260 and then just got pummeled on earnings from 260 all the way down to 210. And then it's sitting here at 198 or so. And I'm like, this could be one of those, those quarters that just kind of alleviates concerns and, and trades higher. So, I mean, the issue, and I was looking at, you know, <laughs> Do I think it goes back to 260 by tomorrow's earnings? That's a tough one, but those are 25 by 35. So a small lotto maybe, I don't know. So I'll probably just sit on my hands and then it's stress-free. Don't have to worry about some things and then uh, go from there. But uh, that's my rant for, t for today. I'll, uh, that's all I got for now. Let's have a great day. Hopefully tomorrow's another good day. Good earnings after the close. Good PC, flat PC data or, or cool than expected. And uh, yeah, rock and roll.